Thank you. Uh, well, before, as, you're, as you're leaving, uh, Senator Crockwell, uh, I, um, I, I'm surprised at, at that of the, the turbines. My understanding from the Housing Committee was that actually turbines were getting smaller rather than bigger. Uh, so I am surprised at that. So I'll certainly raise that as an issue um, because that would seem contrary to what we're being told in the Housing Committee as we went through the, 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 the planning permission for all of these, especially with the off, offshore. Uh, and also, uh, and I'm glad, uh, do I infer your support for the faith and spill because it is a very important and, and I appreciate it. I think the language might already be published. Uh, so thank you very much for that. Um, Senator McGrehan, uh, you also raised uh, the, the uh, waiver of the development levy, also uh, raised by, by Senator Casey. Uh, there's no question but that it has shown a massive step forward uh, in, in upping the number of commencements and it was raised by my own colleagues last night um, in the context of our own parliamentary party as well. So its extension, I, I, I noticed the 24th of April and we're back just the week before, uh, so perhaps we could uh, lobby in a load of commencements and everything on it uh, and, to, and to act on it, but there's no question that we, that, that needs to be raised. Um, uh, anything, what else did she do? Oh yes, also Senator um, McGrehan uh, raised the disproportionate impact that VAT has on border counties and, and reading the reports last weekend, it, it must be quite frightening for, for those living along the border uh, and, uh, and, and earning their living there, uh, that the idea that suddenly the, the bottom can drop out of their business. Uh, so certainly I am mindful that that is Monday week, is that, that, that deadline, uh, so it is incumbent on all of us and if the Shannon perhaps uh, I will write a note to the leader to, that we write on behalf of the Shannon for that uh, to, to draw that point. Um, Senator Keoghan raised uh, the issue of puberty blockers and, and I, I would concur with her in so far as the body dysmorphia, you know, it, it, is, uh, it is real and we do need evidence-based treatment and, and from that perspective I, I do completely agree with that. The, the mother and baby home photographic ID, th there is going to be a disproportionate effect for older people who perhaps didn't have, uh, so I, I'm very happy to make representation directly to the Minister today on that. I know um, it was also raised by, by uh, Senator Boyhan, the, the mother and baby home payment scheme and the extension thereof, uh, and, and I will address that in a moment, but certainly if there is an impact, I'm supporting a number of women uh, making those applications since yesterday. Uh, it hasn't come up for me yet, but, but I, I very much to take on board that that is your um, that that has experience. Here. Leader, just to welcome the uh, Gowrie Outreach Group um, from County Wexford, who guests of Deputy Paul Cure. You're very welcome to Leinster House. Thank you for being here today, and I hope you have a very pleasant visit and enjoy your Easter holidays. Sorry, Leader. Thank you. You're very welcome. Um, so I, I certainly I will. Uh, the minister, go back to my office. So I'll get on to the minister about that. Um, uh, and, and, and while we're on the subject of the mother and baby home redress, uh, it is my memory that on the record of this house, Minister O'Gorman, when it was raised with him that there were people left out of the scheme, that he said he would review it. I have it written in big bold print uh, on it on my desk uh, with a view to hold him very rig rig uh, rigorously to that. Um, uh, and you know, with regard to the, the drug trials, I know that, uh, that Senator Boyan is working very hard on that. Uh, and hopefully we will have progress there. But I also note that there is no progress in the contribution from the relig religious uh, institutions. So it is probably reasonable that we would, we would look for an updated report from the minister, perhaps statements on it later in this, in this term, um, to see how has the uptake gone and that if there are any issues, uh, issues arising uh, in people making, make, making their claims um, that, that we get to address that in statements in the House. So I think I would urge for us to do that. Um, now, uh, Senator uh, Burke um, also raised the issue of, of road safety um, and uh, along with that of, of Senator Murphy who gave some very frightening statistics. The idea that there were 1,800, do I understand that right? 1,800 speeding offences over the bank holiday weekend. I mean, that's a disgrace. I, I'm glad that they're being detected. It clearly shows an enforcement um, going on by the Gardaí and, and a Trojan effort over the weekend. But, um, but it is really shocking. Uh, and and I, I agree.
agree with you. We need a, we need a debate in this House just for the purposes of raising the profile of the, of the advocate. I, I, we had the experience in my family when I was 16 years of age of a phone call coming of a 19-year-old cousin being killed on the roads. It is a long, long time ago now, and he would be a fine man, probably possibly with grandchildren by now. But he, um, you know, every April on that same day, you, you relive that trauma. And, and I'm, I'm a mere cousin uh, for his own siblings and his, his mother. It was a really horrific, horrific thing to, to, uh, to experience. And I think of them, I think of them uh, when any family, that the experience of going through receiving that news, what it means, how it is for that community. Um, so there is no doubt we, we definitely need to, to raise the profile of it here. Um, the, the Senator Burke also raised the issue of rethinking the fat rate and, and that made me minded of your uh, contribution Senator Dolan also in that we're trying to get people to transition into tourism, transition into areas um, and, and certainly we, we need to be bringing people into, into that sector not seeing places close uh, within that sector. Uh, so it's certainly we need to perhaps, uh, we, we need to write from the Shannon and, and express that as our, our, I will propose that to the leader, um, certainly going back. Um, Senator Gavin uh, raised the issue of uh, University Hospital Kerry uh, and looking for statements in the House with Minister Donnelly. There's no question there is a, a, a very strong need uh, for that, uh, for statements. It would strike me that the University Hospital Kerry will be a matter for commencement also, I think, specifically to get those issues addressed. Um, but also when it comes to um, the, the, the Minister Donnelly needs to come into the House. Um, uh, Senator Dolan, in, in raising the fact that there is this information morning and webinar going on to, to bring out the information for regenerative tourism and accommodation, um, getting the information out is really, really important. I commend you for, for amplifying that message. Um, but there is no question, there's a tremendous opportunity now, uh, particularly, I mean, the idea that there are no uh, accommodation of bed nights in, uh, in Roscommon, uh, in, in the mist. Oh, there is. Well, the, that there would be. <coughs> in, her own, in her own experience uh, of the people advising you, uh, certainly. Uh, but there is huge money out there. The idea that there's 80 million from the government and 80 million from the EU, uh, that is a considerable support. Uh, and we need people, yes, coming up. And I, I liked your championing of the ideas uh, and the, the opportunities in that. I, I think that, we, that is to be commended and, and amplified further. Uh, Senator Clonan, there, there is no doubt there is a grave injustice going on um, and, and the administration of disability services and supports for families within the HSC is, is absolutely dreadful. One of the concerns, I think uh, Minister Rabbit, one of the concerns that we expressed in this House perhaps prior to your time here was when, when the Minister moved from, um, from health into children, how would accountability be held? And were we going to find that across, uh, across departments? And how are we going to call in the Minister for Health when this is under the, the Minister for Children, Equality and Disability and Integration? Um, so I think that, that that is a matter of concern. I think that perhaps we should be framing it in accountability of the HSC with uh, Minister Donnelly in this particular area and get statements on that. But it may well be that Minister Rabbit also needs to attend. And I'm not quite sure, to be perfectly honest, how that works when you've two departments involved, but, but the issue of people falling between CHOs, personalities within different CHOs, exercising their power is something I've come across in CHO 7 also, so it's not unique to CHO 6, the two of them seem to, to certainly have personalities who are, who are not transparent in the exercise of their authority uh, and uh, and that is something that I would absolutely wholeheartedly endorse that we um, that we su support here uh, absolutely with the, with the statements um, Senator Castles, uh, you um, have spoken about the research. I, I would dearly love to get my hands on seeing that because I think the fact is for parents it is very difficult. Uh, you, you see a model and there is a societal pressure on you to be 
all things to all people, to never be tired, never get in the door and think, oh God, I could do it five minutes and hide under the stairs. Uh, I saw a programme recently where someone was hiding in, the, in a wardrobe just to get away from her family. Um, and, and while we laughed, there was a certain resonance in, oh my God, she just has to go to the toilet to get a break. Um, because the, the demands on family life and on life, and that, that sense of a, a bar of perfection that nobody ever reaches. And, and we need normality to be called out. Um, Perhaps we need a, a debate on parenting, supports for parents, that experience of parenting uh, here. And, 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 I do, and I do hear that. I, I would completely and utterly support that. And I, I will, in an email in, send and support that. Overall, this has several senators uh, paid tribute uh, to, um, to our, our Taoiseach, uh, to Leo Varadkar for his extraordinary service uh, to our state and his extraordinary work. He, he was certainly someone who broke glass ceilings um, uh, for the LGBT community in, in coming out and in then assuming office as, as Taoiseach of our country, uh, as the son of a migrant. He has shown great nobility uh, throughout in, in his decisions and whether you agree or don't agree with him, um, he has always been very, very clear and transparent in, the, in where he stands, why he explains, and I have always found a great a great um, comfort from the when he explained. Well, this is why we can't do that because it's this, and he would he would bring uh, peace and and stability to to matters. Uh, very moved by by yesterday. Um, you know, I, I think his his legacy is yet to be written, and, and history will will look at him in, incredibly kindly from a lot of achievements and to to be going out of office in a position where we are in full employment, where our economy is very strong, where our housing is on the up and commencements are on the up, uh, where we have um, a lot of positive and a satisfaction rating amongst our people that's extraordinarily high. And in the 90s, when it, it presented wise, um, when we have all of that, it is, it is an incredible achievement. Um, so I, I, I'm grateful for the tributes paid to him and add my voice to that.